Ronald. Wow. Well, he was my business partner, but he was my best friend. I, uh, he, he knew me his entire life. I was a year older than him, and uh, he's the first person that I met after, that he, I'm the first person he met after my mom and dad, you know. Uh, uh, we did everything together. We took piano lessons at five and six years old, did our first piano recital. Uh, our father taught us both how to tap dance <clears throat> when we were very young, and we did our first performance together uh, with our father, our first professional performance over here at the Mule Bike Hotel. Uh, I was seven, he was six. Uh, wow, Ronald, he was, he was a great human being. He was the best. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's a huge loss. I I lost my best friend. So much that, but we always had fun. I mean, uh, I mean, and Ronald was such a good choreographer. I mean, people always talk about our rendition of Mr. Bojangles. Well, Ronald's the one that choreographed that. Uh, his uh, his dancing style. A lot of people don't realize it now because we we've been doing this so long. Uh, but years ago, I could only do choreography. And Ronald's the one that showed me how to become a hoofer. He, he started dissecting stuff and explaining to me how to, to, to you know, just roll with it and, and, and dance, tap dance like a jazz musician. You know, Ronald, Ronald got way better as a tap dancer way before I did. And so uh, performing with him, and for years, I mean, that was all. I mean, I, I left home and started, I mean, with the band named Clyden and her when I was 16. I came home when I was 17 because Ronald wasn't in. And then we started Lonnie and the band, and he was the choreographer, the saxophone player, singer, you know, uh, with Lonnie and the band. And then uh, with the McFadden brothers, that was his idea. After the band broke up, he, uh, he, uh, decided we should go back to what we used to do, only without our father in the middle. So we became the McFadden brothers and we did our first gig with Olita Adams at the music hall. I think that was in 70, excuse me, well, I mean 70, I think 83, 1983, something like that. Yeah. I have a knowledge of piano, you know, I, I, I can't play the piano. I, I, we took piano lessons and I, I, quit when I was like uh, 11 years old, you know, I, I, and that's when I got serious about trying to play the trumpet and Ronald start playing the saxophone. And of course, our father had Ronald listening to Charlie Parker, Charlie Parker, Charlie Parker all the time, you know. He started, both of us started in elementary school at like 10 years old. I think that was the, the age. So he, he, he must have been 10, I must have been 11, yeah, when we, we started playing musical instruments. Yeah. Saxophone and trumpet, at least. Yeah. Well, like with, with Lonnie and the band, Ronald was like, uh, I mean, he, he did everything. I mean, he was the choreographer. He sang, he played flute, he played alto saxophone. Back then, uh, it was a lot of fusion going on, so I used to play electric trumpet sometimes. I had this pocket trumpet and I had it rigged up where I'd play it on a wah-wah. And Ronald made this instrument up that he called the Dirty Bird where he put a saxophone mouthpiece on one of my old trumpets. And he used to play, play it, it had this weird sound. And you know, and that was what was going on in the 70s with the fusion and, and all that kind of stuff. And so Ronald was, uh, he always had this, this, this uh, genius-like thing about him. I mean, when we were in grade school, he went to accelerated school. You know, he he uh, he was just he was gifted that way. Like Ronald could do a lot of things. I mean, he he was a licensed licensed electrician. He used to have his own business where he would would uh, 
program and repair people's computers. I mean, he, Ronald could do it. All I can do is perform. I, saw, I don't have any other talents. Yeah. But Ronald was, and he was a great father. He reminds me of my dad. He, he was hands on. I mean, everything that his daughters were involved in, and he was involved in it with them. He, uh, he was there. He was a hands-on father. That's, that's probably the biggest thing. I mean, yeah, I, of course I remember him performing with me, and I'm going to miss him greatly as a performer, but the person he was, that's, that... Mm. Ronald and I did a gig over at the Lowe's Hotel. We were, we were hired to perform J.P. Morgan and Chase have this big, big worldwide convention that they, they're doing, it's a three-day convention, and they wanted to open it up with Kansas City, so they hired us. <laughs> and and uh, we went up there and did what we do. You know, they just wanted a hot 10 minutes, so we sung, we did Once in a Lifetime, Once in a Lifetime, a man did that very fast, and ba da 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 Da, then drop it to boom. Kansas City. And so we did Kansas City, then we tap danced on it, and we I played trumpet, he played saxophone. Then we went out, da 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 da. We see ya. I'm not welcome to Kansas City. Walked off stage. I walked backstage and they had a ramp and by seven on tap shoes, the ramp metal against metal. So I slid. And, but I caught myself and I got to the land. I said, hey man, be careful, this, this ramp is slick. I turned around I, enough to start walking and then I heard boom. And I thought, I thought he slid, but he, he had a heart attack right after we walked off. He had a heart attack and fell. Well, I've always said that's the way I want to go out. I don't know, like my wife's book <laughs> teased me, said, I think God got confused. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, because it could have happened any time. You know, when it's time to go, it's time to go. He could have been driving. He could have been on stage. But he did a good performance, a very good performance.